In this lecture, we will cover the transmission rate of typical services. We'll look at speech, audio, fax, colored images, and video. This will serve like a, a motivation for what comes next, motivation for uh, the MRE communication. So let's start. For speech signals, uh, the speech bandwidth is about 3.4 kilohertz. And looking at Nyquist criteria, remember Nyquist criteria, we sampled above Nyquist rate. Nyquist rate is twice the highest frequency. We take some margin. So if you assume that the frequency of speech is 4 kilohertz, then we sample at 8,000 samples per second. The encoder used, the quantizer, is made of 8 bits for voice applications. If you want to get the data rate, you multiply the, the number of bits per sample times the number of samples per second, and we get the number of bits per second. So we get 8 times 8,000, we get 64 kilobits per second. 64 kilobits per second is the transmission rate for typical voice uh, application, for typical speech. Now, the required bandwidth for this transmission in baseband, uh, the required bandwidth, okay, Recall that if, if it's baseband, we, we require half the bandwidth. I mean, the bandwidth will be half the rate. So it will be 32, uh, 32 kilohertz. But if you use uh, passband, where we have double sideband, the bandwidth requirement will become 64. Once more, looking at uh, the channel capacity, the required bandwidth in baseband is 32 kilohertz. So the maximum transmission rate is double the, band, the bandwidth. But if you want to choose pass band where we have double the bandwidth, double the bandwidth, double side band, then the bandwidth equal to the data rate. If you speech, if you speak for one hour, the data rate, number of bits per second, times the number of seconds, one hour is made of 3,600 seconds. That will give you the amount of bits in one hour of speech, which is 230.4 megabits. That's a huge amount of data. What you see here is a typical time domain representation of, of the voice. And we see here the frequency uh, equivalent or the frequency transform, the spectrum. Uh, we can also use, uh, this is just to give you a general idea about voice uh, application. Okay. There is, of course, difference between, in, in general, there is a difference between the male voice and the female voice. And if you look at the spectrum of typical uh, male or female, you'll find that there are some variations. Now, the following model here uh, is kind of representing the way human speech. So muscles affect, uh, muscle is a force that, that pressurizes the lung. And then we have, this is kind of the amplitude or power. And then we have the vocal cords, which vibrates based on your uh, cavity. And it's different from one person to another. And that will make our voice different. So we can control which output does it go through the nasal capacity or uh, cavity or the mouth. And this gives you a model how we generate the voice. But the output frequency depends on the details inside here. Now, the second application is audio. Audio is different than speech because when we say speech, we mean human speech. But audio could be up to 24 kilohertz. So usually we cover from 16 to 24. I mean from baseband up to 16 or from baseband zero up to 24 kilohertz. Again, if you want to sample at twice the highest frequency, okay, we speak usually about 44,000 samples per second. I um, mean, the peak would be two times 24, which is 48. But for typical application, we can go to 44,000 samples per second, compared with 8,000 samples, which is just, just speech. The encoder now, usually for audio, we want higher quality. We can go up to 16 bits per sample. And if you want, Stereo, remember the, the video had about stereo and mono and the FM modulation. If you want stereo, then you have two channels, the right and the left. So you can, you can double this amount. If you multiply these numbers, 2 times 16 times 44, you get 1.4 megabits per second. This is the data rate. Okay, compared with 64 kilobits per second, which is the voice. Now, of course, when the sound comes to our ear, this is showing you a model of the way we hear things. You can think of what's inside as um, we have a, a high frequency detection, and then we have medium frequency detection, and we have low frequency detection. Okay, so as if our, the, we are, the way we are created, we have bank of filters 
every filter is required is responsible for certain frequencies. If you want to read more about uh, about uh, the way we listen to things, the way we hear things, then uh, it's an interesting topic. I advise you to follow to visit the following link. The third example is the transmission of images. We'll start with the simple example of black and white image. A black and white image, it, it's made of a piece of paper, for example, and we divide this into inches. So this is an inch square, where we have inch by inch here. So this is called inch square. How many inches inside the page, for example, in the letter size, uh, there's about eight by 12 inches. And in every inch, the, our sampler samples at a resolution of 200 by 100 pixels per square inch which means this square is going to be divided into pixels and how many pixels in this example we're going to divide we have 200 by 100 pixels so it's not uh, even uh, in terms of columns and rows we have 200 by 100 pixels now every pixel is going to be quantized using one bit why one bit because all i need to say is this bit equal to black or white so it's either zero or one so the number of bits required to, for for communication in this whole uh, paper we need to know how many inches squares this is 8 by 12 inch square and then we know need to multiply by the number of pixels per uh, inch square that's 8, 200 by times 100 and then we need to multiply by the quantization which is one bit in this example if you multiply this number you get 1.92 megabit or equivalently it's 2.4 it's 240 kilobytes remember that one byte is equivalent to one byte is equivalent to eight bits one byte equal to eight bits and this is how we go from here to here capital b is a byte small b is a bit if you want to transmit the, over uh, this over a telephone line okay you need to know how many bits you can transmit how much is the data rate in that channel and then you divide to get the time so if it's if it's the old slow telephone channels of 3.4 kilohertz baseband then the amount of time it takes is going to be 4.7 minutes try to find out how do you go from here to here and share with us your solution in the notes how did we come up with this number Now we go from typical black and white images, or if you want to call them fax uh, images, to colored images. In a color image, usually we have high resolution. Usually we don't go for we, go, we don't go for color unless we want resolution. So you have usually 400 by 400 pixels per second per inch square. It could be a 300 by 300 or 600 or 1,200. It depends on what, how much resolution you want. Then um, remember, for colored images, we are going to divide the image into three colors. So we have the same image will uh, be represented by here by red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue. And then you need to multiply by three. There's a factor of three. Now, in our case, every one color is having a quantization level of eight bits, which means we have 256 levels of red, 256 level of green, and 256, uh, 256 levels of blue. Of course, you need to know how much is the size of your page. It's going to give you the number of inches square. Then you multiply by the sampling, you multiply by quantization, and then you multiply by three to get the data rate of 307.2 megabit or 38.4 megabyte. That's a huge amount of data for still images. For video applications or moving pictures, we have um, a video is made of still images, but we have to sample. We have to take multiple images and then we run them to create the video. We can have 15 frames per second, if you use the previous uh, still image, the colored image, and we have 15 of them, then we multiply the previous data rate by 15 frames per second, we get the number of uh, bits. We call every image like a frame. So the frame rate, we, we chose here 15 for the calculation, but every standard will have different framing rates. For example, we have uh, European standard, American video, and then of course, as you go on, you have a uh, higher data rate. And if you want to have slow motion, the data rate would be much, much more than this. For example, the current standard of 4K uh, TVs, uh, which has become a standard for ultra high definition TV, TV, UHD TV. Then the resolution of this is about 3840 by 216, which is not exactly 4K, but close to 4K. So the standard is calling it 4K. And the aspect ratio, the ratio between the height and the width 
is 16 to 9 or 1.78 to 1. Of course, this is less than 4K industry, okay, which is supposed to be 4096 by 2160. And the aspect ratio is a bit different of 1.9 to 1. Uh, so as the technology evolves, we go into higher uh, resolutions, higher sampling in X and Y. And of course, also we, we seek more uh, bits per sample. But uh, there is a range or values after which it's difficult to feel the difference. Okay, so a framing a video is nothing but a moving picture. So the data bit becomes very huge. We have 4.6 gigabits per second. So what's the solution? What is the solution to this huge amount of data? We have two solutions. The first one is compression, where we reduce the data rate. We have a, a dedicated course for this, uh, called information theory encoding or source coding. And the other option is what we have, what we call MRE communication. Instead of using binary, we're going to use MRE communication, and that will expand the channel capability. We have two types of MRE, multi-amplitude or orthogonal. So the previous example will serve as a good um, motivation for our next lecture about MRE communication. Remember, we have binary and MRE. We have been seen, we have seen binary, and it's time to see MRE communication.